Did you know that Australia has about 1,500 different kinds of spiders? <coughs> 4,000 kinds of ants, 350 kinds of termites, and the camel population in Australia exceeds that in Egypt? Neither do I, and to be honest with you, I don't care much about it. What interests me much more is what local brands of tractors are used there and what the Australian farming looks like. Continuing our mechanization trip around the world, started in one of the previous episodes, today I'm taking you to the land of kangaroos and koala bears, to Australia. In today's episode, we will discuss Australian brands of tractors. I will also tell you the story of the Australia's greatest tractor dreamer, Bob Chamberlain and his tractors. I am Matteo, welcome to my channel and if you haven't managed to do it yet, I invite you to leave a thumb up and subscribe to my channel if you like videos like this one. And now, without further ado, let's jump into a story. I'm a schemer boy, I'm a dreamer boy I love a girl that I'll even rock and need a boy Baby, I'm a beamer boy, need a beamer boy I wanna see three steps to see the boy The first tractors were imported to Australia from the United States and Europe in the first decades of the 20th century. Manufacturers such as Alice Chalmers, Fordson, Lance, David Brown, Kleetrak, Ferguson, Case, International and Caterpillar supplied their machines to the land down under. However, there was a serious problem with imported machinery. First, sea transport significantly increased the cost of the machines. Secondly, most of these tractors were not designed for Australian conditions, such as operation in high temperatures and high dustiness. From the very beginning, there was also a huge problem with logistics and the lack of spare parts. Sometimes farmers had to wait months for some spare parts and the brand new tractors were standing in the workshop instead of working. The answer to all these problems was to start producing tractors on site in Australia. And there were a quite a few daredevils who were not afraid to take up this art. Due to the harsh conditions, Australian farmers had to fend for themselves. Therefore, most of the machines they work with were self-made. And while it's not a big deal to build a cultivator, plow or disc harrow, building your own tractor is a quite a serious undertaking. One of the first Australian tractors was Big Lizzy, created by Frank Botfield in 1915. It was a real 45-ton monster, generating 60 horsepower. Take a look at the unusual design of the tractor wheels, which you can say unfold in its way under itself. These special skids were to increase traction and reduce the collapse of the tractor in the slushy soil, as the standard wheels could not cope with such a weight. Unfortunately, the cost of this solution was a low top speed of a few miles per hour. Frank Botfield later granted a patent for this solution to other manufacturers, but it did not become popular on a larger scale. Big Lizzy was used in clearing fields for cultivation. 30 meters long chains or ropes were attached to it, which while pulling by tractor, tore everything behind. The Lizzy was also used in transport, but was quickly replaced by another tractor due to the low speed of the vehicle. Currently, a restored Big Lizzy tractor stands in red cliffs and is a tourist attraction. As I mentioned before, Big Lizzy was not the only Australian construction. At that time many other tractors were built throughout the country, but most of them was not built on industrial scale. Most important tractor producers of that time were McDonald, Gelbrat, Ronaldson Bros and Tippett, Howard, Wickers Aussie or Kelly and Lewis. However, it should be mentioned that many of them were based on tractors previously imported to Australia from overseas. For example, a Wickers Aussie was an Australian version of the McCormick Deering 1530. On the other hand, Kelly and Lewis did not even hide that their tractors 
were simply German Lance Bulldogs produced in Australia. And it is not surprising, because their company started with being the general importer of Lance in Australia. However, none of the brands I mentioned were successful and usually their tractors disappeared from the market after a few years. Some companies collapsed, others were bought by foreign corporations and others changed their profile by switching to the production of, for example, cultivation machines such as Howard, which has been successfully producing harrows to this day. The Australian tractor industry at that time was highly fragmented. In fact, none of the producers, maybe except McDonald, which was already known in Australia for the production of engines, was able to offer farmers professional after-sales service and quick, efficient access to parts. Australia needed a serious tractor manufacturer who could provide a high-quality machine adapted to local conditions and provide service facilities. The largest tractor manufacturer in Australia that managed to achieve some commercial success and remained on the market over the years was the Chamberlain brand founded by Bob Chamberlain. Tractor production was launched in Welshpool in the facilities of the former ammunition factory. Chamberlain's first tractor, the two-cylinder 40K model, left the factory in 1949. The tractor was very warmly received by Australian farmers, which only spared the development of the brand. It was not a coincidence either, as the Australian government subsidized the production of Chamberlain tractors, which made them very competitive, comparing them to the imports. In 1955, Chamberlain introduced a new series of champion tractors equipped with Perkins engines that would become Australia's most iconic tractor. These tractors will not only be used in agriculture, but also in road transport. Its transport version will also take part in Redex off-road rallies, reaching maximum speeds of up to 110 km per hour. Chamberlain quickly expanded its production to include tillage machines, such as disc plows, which are very popular in Australia. The brand developed quite dynamically until the mid-70s. Then, as a result of the rather sudden collapse of the domestic agriculture tractor market, the company fell into serious financial problems and in 1978 was taken over by John Deere. The Americans continued the production of tractors in Australia for a few more years under the Chamberlain John Deere brand, and later only as a John Deere. In the end, it turned out that importing ready-made tractors from the United States and Europe was more profitable for the concern and the factory was closed. Today, Chamberlain tractors are considered old-timers in Australia and are very popular with collectors. This is how the story of Australia's largest tractor manufacturer ended. In 1964, when Chamberlain was at its peak, somewhere on Australia's second coast, in Corowa, Carla Upton was building his own high-powered tractor. At that time it was a kind of gap, as the aforementioned Chamberlain did not produce tractors with more than 100 horsepower. In 1965, Upton entered the market with 180 horsepower heavy hairy tractor, powered by a Japanese UD diesel engine. In the following years, Upton released a few more tractors, the largest of which was 350 horsepower. What's interesting, this machine was only two-wheel drive, which was the intention of the designer from the beginning. Carl Upton wanted to prove that with the appropriate weight distribution, the tractor can achieve high traction even without four-wheel drive. On a very similar concept was based a Honey Bee project created in the late 70s in Canada. Unfortunately, production of Upton tractors lasted only until 1978. What's interesting, Upton agriculture exists in Australia to this day, operating in the agriculture industry and producing systems for irrigation of fields. In 1975, another interesting tractor brand called Acremaster was founded in Meredin. The company was founded by Laurie Phillips and from the very beginning it was focused on the production of high-power articulated tractors. Acre Master produced tractors with a power of up to 515 horsepower. The power units used in them were German Mercedes-Benz engines. The production of tractors under the Acre Master brand continued until 1984, when the company was acquired by Horwood Buckshaw, another Australian manufacturer of machinery, including combined harvesters. 
However, after selling the company, Laurie Phillips did not rest on his laurels and in 1987 he founded a second company that produced essentially the same tractors but under the Phoenix brand. Their production lasted until 1991, after which it was terminated. The aftermentioned Horwood Bag Show is one of the largest and the oldest producers of agricultural equipment in Australia. The company was founded in 1924 and its career began with the production of simple cultivation machines. On the way, trailed and later also self-propelled harvesters joined the Horwood Bag Show offer. After taking over the Philips Acre Master brand, the company's offer was also joined by high-power articulated tractors, which were produced until the 1990s. Not so long ago, in 2021, the company was bought by CNH. From then on, Horwood Beck Show is part of the CNH Group portfolio, along with Case IH, New Holland and Steyr. Despite this, this brand is not yet offered in Europe and it is not even known if it is planned due to the low demand for such huge equipment not adapted to European conditions. In 1979, the Australian construction office Baldwin, dealing with the development of heavy equipment, presented its original tractor design. These tractors were produced until 1990s, a total of six different models powered by Cummins engine with power from 290 to 600 horsepower. Unfortunately, the company was hit hard by the Australian tractor market in the 1990s and stopped producing tractors with a focus on developing mining and industrial machinery. Many Baldwin tractors work on Australian farms to this day, such as the one in the video attached to the world's largest pneumatic seed drill. You must admit that it makes a really great impression. In 1993 in Melbourne, the Merlin company was established to manufacture tractors with a power of 75 to 145 horsepower. The tractors used Perkins engines. Overall, I couldn't find out much information about them. On Australian discussion forums, I found only a few topics relating to these tractors. I don't know who was responsible for this tractor and to what extent it was actually an original design. It is only certain that the production of these tractors was completed in 2012 and the factory, with its equipment, was auctioned off. There were voices that the tractor was based on components from China, while according to the manufacturer's declaration, from 25 to 55% of parts were produced locally in Australia. And since we have already mentioned China, I need to tell you about the AG King brand, which tractors are sold in Australia. AG King is a company that imports Chinese-made tractors to Australia, manufactured in the Jinma and Y2 plants. Initially, I got confused and thought it was the same plant as Lovell or Arbos due to similar masks and interior, but these tractors are not made in the factories of the famous Chinese Lovell, even though they share a lot of parts. And that's all for today's episode. I hope you liked my video. You need to know that on my list of mechanization trips, I have at least a few interesting countries to visit. If you are interested in the topic, please be sure to leave a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to like my Facebook page for more interesting content about tractors and heavy machinery. And now thank you for watching and see you in my next episodes.